This video is a review of all the convergence tests we've talked about in class. I'll list the tests roughly in the order that I would try to apply them. I like to start with the divergence test. Usually it's pretty easy to check if the limit as n goes to infinity of the terms is equal to zero, and if not, you're done because the series diverges. Be careful though, the divergence test can only be used to check for divergence. It cannot be used to prove convergence because if the limits of the terms is equal to zero, the series may converge, but it may still diverge. The next thing I do is to check if the series is a simple p-series or a geometric series. Remember, a p-series is a series of the form 1 over n to the p. n is our indexing variable. p is some number like 2 or 5.8. And this is easy to test for convergence since it converges if p is greater than 1 and it diverges otherwise. A geometric series, this is the kind of the form a times r to the n, where a is the first term. Let me start at 0 here, so it's the, really the first term. And r is the, the common ratio. And this one's easy to check, too, because it converges if the absolute value of r is less than 1 and diverges otherwise. If the series happens to be alternating, then the alternating test is a good one to apply next. Be careful, this test can only be used to prove convergence. If the series is actually alternating, and this, what I call the step size, that's the absolute value of the terms, is going to zero and decreasing, then we can conclude that the series converges. But if some of those conditions are not satisfied, we can't automatically assume that the series diverges. Well, not at least by the alternating test. If the step size doesn't go to zero, then we should have already figured out the series diverges by the divergence test. We're really, we're really applying the divergence test there. And if the step size is not decreasing, not even ultimately decreasing, then the alternating test is just inconclusive. It doesn't apply. We don't know yet whether it diverges or converges, and we have to look for another test. Now, if the series is not one of these nice p-series geometric or alternating series, my go-to test is going to be the ratio test. The ratio test is especially good for series with n factorials in them or 2 to the n's in them. Things with sort of geometric pieces that are not strictly geometric are good candidates for the ratio test. But be careful. The ratio test will be inconclusive for what I call p-like series. So series that just have you know things like n's in them and maybe the square roots of n's in them, things that can be easily compared to a p-series are not good candidates for the ratio test. So if you happen to remember that, you can save some time by not trying the ratio test on those. If the ratio test is not a good candidate or, or ends up being inconclusive, what I might try next is one of the comparison tests. So that would be like what I call the ordinary or the limit comparison test. We generally want to compare to series that we know a lot about, that we know the convergence status of. So we generally want to compare to either p-series or geometric series. The comparison tests are especially good for p-like series that the ratio test is inconclusive for. And to figure out what to compare to, it's a good rule of thumb to consider the dominant or highest power terms. One thing you need to be aware of when applying the comparison test is that it only applies to series with positive terms. Of course, the first few terms never matter for a series convergence, so it's okay to apply it if you have eventually positive terms. But if the terms never become always positive and they're not strictly alternating, so the alternating test doesn't apply, we don't have to give up hope. We can use the fact that absolute convergence implies convergence. That's what I try, that's sort of my, my seventh test to try. Um, so you can just take the absolute values of your terms and then maybe use the comparison test. And if that works to prove convergence, then your original series will converge also. 
Another method I haven't mentioned before is to use limit laws to split up the series. So if you have the sum of two series, say a P series and a geometric series, then a natural thing to do is to split this up as the sum of two series and use a different method for each piece. If both pieces converge, like they do in this situation, then the sum also converges. Also, if one piece happens to converge and the other diverges, then the sum will diverge. The only thing to be careful of is that if both pieces diverge, then the sum may still diverge, but it may converge because there might be cancellation. One piece might be diverging to infinity and one piece may be diverging to negative infinity and that's an indeterminate kind of form. If none of this stuff has worked so far, I might look to try the integral test and compare my series to an integral. This is especially handy, in my experience, for series with logs in them. So something, and also it has to be a series where the integral is easy to compute. So, you know, something like ln n over n, if you instead look at the integral of ln x over x, that's pretty easy to compute using u substitution, and so that would be a good candidate for the integral test. Be aware that the integral test can only be used when the series terms can be thought of as the function's values at integers for a function that is positive, continuous, and decreasing. Last on my list is the method of telescoping series. I put it last only because it's kind of a hassle to work with telescoping series, but it does have some good points. First of all, using the method of telescoping series, you can actually compute the sum rather than just tell if it converges or diverges. The only other tool on this list that'll actually compute the sum of an infinite series is the geometric series test where we have a formula for the sum provided it converges. Another reason to use the telescoping series is if you happen to notice that your terms are the difference of, of related expressions. So something like the sum of e to the 1 over n plus 1 minus e to the 1 over n might be a good candidate for telescoping series. Something like the sum of 1 over n squared minus 1 would also be a reasonable candidate because you can rewrite it using the method of partial fractions. And using that method will, and the telescoping series stuff will help you find an actual sum. But if you just want to know convergence, it'll be a lot easier just to use comparison to a p-series 1 over n squared for this one. So that's pretty much everything I know about convergence tests for series. If you want to keep watching, I'll take a look at some examples on the next page. Before you keep watching, please take a moment to look at these six examples and decide which convergence or divergence test you might try. Please be aware that for many of these series, there are lots of tests that'll work. So just because you pick a different one than I do doesn't mean that yours is wrong. I think this first example can be conquered using the divergence test. My hunch is if we took that limit and used L'Hopital's rule, we'd get a limit of infinity, not zero. An alternative, though, would be to use the ratio test, because this is a term that is, has a geometric piece as well as some other stuff. The second example is an alternating series, so my first try is going to be the alternating series test. And my recollection is it, it does work to prove convergence in this case. For this third one, this is the kind that I call a P-like series, because if I just look at the, the dominant terms, the, the highest power terms, I could compare to the P-series, which is 1 over n squared cube rooted, or in other words, 1 over n to the 2 thirds power. Since this one diverges, I'm going to expect my original one will also diverge. I'll probably need to use the limit comparison test because I don't think the inequalities will go the right direction for the ordinary comparison test. This next one's a perfect candidate for splitting up into two pieces. This one, the second piece, I can use the geometric series test to show convergence. And this first one, since it has an n factorial, that's a great candidate for the ratio test. This next one's kind of tricky for me. At first glance, I almost thought it would be a candidate for the integral test if this had just been an n instead of an n squared. 
I might be able to integrate using u substitution. But because it's an n squared, I, the integral test would be more tricky to do. I might have to do integration by parts or something. So I'm going to stay away from that. And I'm going to start by trying the ratio test. Because this does have a geometric kind of like piece to it. And this last example, I'm going to use the integral test here. Because I know I can integrate 1 over x ln x dx using the u substitution u equals ln x. Applying convergence and divergence tests is something that takes practice. The more you do it, the better you'll be at recognizing which tests might apply. But a lot of times there's no substitute for just trying the test, and if it doesn't work it's, or it's inconclusive, just try something else. Good luck, and see you in class.